Okay, I'm back. And so this is a cube, and I guess uh, this is how I open the book. Obviously, now I drew this by hand, freehand. So yeah, it looks like chicken scratch, I know. But with that, um, yeah, kind of a weird shape. It's kind of like a circle almost, and yeah, I'm just, I just drew it freehand because I'm not gonna cut up my book yet because. You know, when I finish it and I sell it and you buy it, then you're more than welcome to cut up the book. And anyway, just for the welcome, hi, this is Amy. I'm with, I'm an artist, writer, and entrepreneur, and I started a nonprofit called The Circle's Edge. And The Circle's Edge is a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to fight loneliness, isolation, rejection, and through outreach programs and social activities with no niche attached. And that, and this covers, um, this takes care of a vastly overlooked, but urgently needed problem in society, which is acceptance and the need to belong. We have <clears throat> social activities. Um, it's been going on for like a couple of decades and we have social activities and um, outreach programs. In fact, um, the perspective, we have like weekly support group on Thursdays from two to four. Um, it's virtual via Zoom. If you don't have a Zoom, you could call in, you could log on our website, circlesedge.org um, or look at meetup.com and find us. It's, we have like, so you can call in virtually. We had a, people call in from Ireland, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Baltimore, all over New York, um, anywhere. So you call in virtually via phone or via Zoom. Or if you're in the Albany, upstate New York area, you could come join us. Right now with COVID, of course, we're in, we had like two out, I mean, we had like the week, the Thursday before Labor Day, we had a um, pre-Labor Day um picnic, which was really a fish fry. He fried, um, the, our facilitator fried um, onion rings, french fries, and deep fried candy bars. I love the deep fried um, peppermint patty. I didn't care much for the deep fried Snickers. But the peppermint patty was good because it melted and it was like almost marshmallow. I don't know what the hell the mint part of peppermint patty is, but once you deep fry with some type of pancake batter and put some salt on top of it, it's really yummy. <laughs> Of course, you got to let it cool down because it's hot as all hell. So we had that um, the two Thursdays ago, the two Thursdays before Labor Day. Um, last Thursday, and it was really hot and humid last Thursday, I went, you know, bees were chasing me. And we weren't having a picnic then, so the building manager didn't really want us to be out. Even though we were outside both times, um, it was a picnic the first time. It was the first time we met up since March 13th when everything kind of closed down. Um, last week, but she prefers us to not to wait till everything's safe and the vaccine's out. So with that, um, we'll still be doing virtually. Um, and when you do show, when we do open back up, we'll like we make yummy, super yummy homemade cookies. I don't, he does. And he shows us how, in fact, I had a chance to do it and it came out good. Yummy homemade popcorn. We watch movies. We have karaoke, um, Zumba, fundraisers, all types of things. Um, we're planning on field trips and so forth, like camping or horseback riding and so forth in the future. Um, as of now, you know, we've obviously put that on hold. And we also have outreach programs. I, when I was in Washington, D.C. at Howard University and I volunteered at Gallaudet at University in Washington, D.C., we did programs there. And um, we're trying to do another one up here. Um, and the books I have out, well, what the, call, the book that this picture is coming out of, which I kind of hand sketched, is called A Different Perspective. And I have several books that are available now for purchase, Conversations Out of Chaos, and the follow-up to Conversations Out of Chaos, which is the Bimbo Chronicles. And my children's book um, called The Adventures of Miss Cutie and Fat. And um, one of my um, and fourth book is called Nine Crazy Dreams. All four of those books are available for purchase now via Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target, whatever. You could you should be able to go to any bookstore or online or in person and order the book or buy the book. Um, and at some point I was saying that the children's book, The Adventures of Miss Cutie and Fat, it has like a, you know, a photograph of my children, but it's, I want a better cover. And I don't know, I, you have a really good, I'm not an artist, obviously. So being that I'm not an artist, a cartoonist, um, I'm going to have to find someone or hire someone to draw a picture of my fat, cuddly, firstborn Siamese cat, fat, Lady Precious Saga, and my adorable Miss Cutie tuxedo cat. Because once they make a cartoon of it, then I'll make a new cover with the cartoon pictures. And 
have a better version with the cover, like the proper cover of their, their children's cartoon. And I want to make t-shirts with their cartoon. And with the different perspective, um, it's a, a multifaceted art book with me and a few other as, um, Aspies. Um, we have one friend of mine, she's a sculptor. She has her sculpt in the book. One guy who's a counselor in Aspie. And up here, he's an artist and he's a poet. And he has like, he mixes his poetry and art together. So he has like his art written around his poetry inside his artwork. And then another lady who's a poet. And then me, I have excerpts from my children's book, uh, Adventures of Miss Cutie and Fed, an excerpt from Conversation Out of Chaos, and an excerpt from Nine Crazy Dreams. And I love optical illusions. So I have a um, reverse perspective illusion in there, which um, you could probably take an exacto knife. It's eight and a half by 11. You know, it's a picture inside eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that's inside the book, of course. So you could take an exacto knife or just a pair of scissors and cut it out. And then once you cut it out, you fold it in half. And then once you fold it in half, you could tape it to a corner of your room. Like I have mine taped to the front door and the, my cloth, my shoe closet. So you could tape it in your dorm or in your bedroom or wherever. Um, it's kind of a reverse perspective. And I have this picture in there. I also have some brain teasers, like some word puzzles and brain teasers in it. By the way, I'm washing clothes, so they're spinning if you hear it. And I'm also playing background music because the demons of the atmosphere are totally screwing up my video. In fact, I did like a three hour video, like a couple of days, I think it was Friday or Thursday, whatever day, Monday, I think, whatever it was, I did a three hour video. I recorded everything um, for this another section. It's like a private section you could get via Patreon or, um, you know, subscription. <laughs> and then you could get these videos and tutorials. And, um, and that's, and it's a book. And um, which I'm working on now, I haven't finished writing it. I'm writing it now. And I also have a few tutorial videos and regular videos. So um, I guess you could say it's an audio book or not. Well, it's a video and an audio, and it's a book and that I'm writing and a video. And then we're gonna try to maybe do like once a month live streams via Zoom or however, where people can type in or discreetly ask questions, whatever. and. Um, that's called Sex God, the power of the spoken word about the law of attraction and the power of the spoken word of vision boards and um, prayers and verbal affirmation, so forth and so on. And so it's kind of like that. So um, I did three hours of that and the video kept freezing and all time. And then my router's right here. So why was it like you don't have Wi Fi signal? Really, it's right there. So I don't know. So I have that playing in the background just to give me some, get rid of the mojos and bad luck and demons to screen up my thing. And it worked so far. Um, but the three hour video, thank God, is a backup. And like I'm backing up this video now with um, the laptop. This is a Chromebook from, my, from the library, so it shouldn't have any problems, but I'm backing it up with a Chromebook. And then I'm also recording it YouTube live because if I do one or the other, the Chromebook always screws up and never uploads, which is why I'm always doing that as a backup not YouTube live. Um, with that, anyway, um, this is inside my book, A Different Perspective, which is actually out. No, it can't be out now because I'm not done with it. I mean, I'm the one that's holding it up because like the children's book, I'm going to have, once I get the cartoon, once I finish writing everything with a, a different perspective and putting these puzzles in there, then I'm going to get someone to cartoonify the children's book. Maybe I'll find that someone like next week to do it. And then I'll make a t-shirts and change the cover and with a different perspective i'm using the cover i just need to finish doing this artwork and once i finish doing the artwork i'll put that out on barnes and nobles wherever and you got and the proceeds for all these books and t-shirts and posters will go toward the, the circle's edge and the different perspective i have like um some brain teasers in there i have some like the i have this which you could cut out i have the other picture you can cut out and also we'll sell like um, posters is a ver like one is a um, reverse perspective poster, which I definitely need help doing. Where I would like, and then um, put on this what you can put one piece on the ceiling and the other pieces on the wall, like one piece on this wall and one piece on that wall. So it's like three piece poster. And then I have another poster that's just like a bigger poster that you fold in half and stick on the wall, you know, like that, um, whatever, like that. And then um, that I have like the perspective 3D drawing where I can make it as like a bed sheet or a blanket, more so like a blanket or a bed sheet or a floor mat or a, a rug. Cause obviously the pr perspective is basically it's on the floor. You see the perspective from a certain angle. So like a rug and a bath mat and a bed sheet is the best way to do that. Um, 
but I need help with the perspective because <laughs> I'm pissed poor at doing those things. Um, but I love them. But I figured out doing this just kind of like sketching and so forth. And so this is like, I guess you could call it a Rubik's Cube or a dice. The one I had was a Rubik's Cube, but I'm going to change it up. So with this, I guess you could follow me along because I'm thinking I'm going to um, draw some, I'll color it. I just kind of hand sketched it. So we'll see how it goes. And it says right here, um, a different perspective, fold me. And then upside down, it says, um, by the circles, Edge Incorporated. And so I think I'll just, because it's easier to follow along once you do it, I guess I'll um, show you how I'll take my little picture here. Oh, and where do you go? Um, uh, God, this thing is hard to open. What the hell? Are you serious? So you can at least see it. Like I said, I didn't um obviously chop it up my book. But when you buy the book, you can obviously cut it out with exacto knife or scissors, you know, basic scissors or whatever. The one I actually did was a um oh these things are hard to put back in. The one I actually did was of a Ru uh, Rubik's shoe. Okay. I don't have any crowns, so just a color difference, you know. Just so you can have different colors and not get confused, I guess, you know. God, these things are hard. I probably should. Oh, I use green. B. Circles. Edge. Blue and purple are very similar because blue purple is basically blue and red. Blue is a, a primary color, red, yellow are primary colors. And purple is just blue and red mixed together with white. Like maroon is blue and purple mixed together with white. So I guess less red. And of course, turquoise is blue and green, but green is blue and yellow. So you got blue is a primary color, yellow is a primary color. Yellow and blue makes green. Yellow and red makes purple. Blue, yellow, red. So red and yellow make orange. Red and blue make purple. And blue and red make purple and blue and yellow, make um, green. Again, I'm just freehanding, which is why it's so wonderful looking. And the book obviously is gonna be a bit more efficient, but you could still cut, I'm just showing you how to do it. So when you cut it out, I'll show you how to cut it and fold it. And you can actually color it, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll make it so, if you want, you could color it, get, get better colors than purple and green. I mean, I was just doing it kind of fast just so you guys can, whoever buys the book can understand. And so now you cut it. You take your scissors 
because I have somebody gets them a book, it'll be in a book, you know. Like if this is a book, it'll be inside the book. And you turn a page, you turn a page, and oh, here it is. So obviously, it's gonna fit in the book. So you'll just cut it out the book. You could cut it out with the, you know, like this way, or with the exacto knife. You could cut exact whatever you cut it out. And then once you cut it out, it will look like this. You know. And you see, I didn't really do much. A different perspective, and because it's reversed, I guess I could flip it over at some point when I love. And then you turn it upside down. It says, "By the circle's edge," and it says right here, "The fold me." There's a line there. You fold that in half, and so um, you just kind of like cut it. Once you, you know, you know, cut it out the book like with an exacto knife. You get an exacto knife and just trim the dot along the dotted lines. You can trim along the dotted lines. Or you could cut along the dotted lines. It's probably easier to exact a knife along the dotted lines, but whatever. And then once you do that, then you just cut around, you know. And if you're someone, let's say, who has, you know, uh, you know, a difficult time maybe using scissors or cutting, maybe because, you know, your hand or arthritis or your you know, your your parents may not let you use scissors, then you can ask them to help you cut. And this is just trash. Give me chuck. Ha ha And then this is what you end up with right here, this weird looking circle. And then right here, I should say cut here. You need to cut this line. And I need to put down here, cut, cut, and then fold. So you cut this line. Just to that, you know, just cut there. And now, here's the difficult part, for me at least. You fold it in half, and of course this isn't even, isn't that nice? You fold it in half. You fold it in half like that. And then you fold it in half this way. Maybe you should cut it after you fold it. That's probably a better thing. Cut it after you fold it because it's even more clumsy like someone like me to cut it before you fold it. So you cut it like that. And now, and then this part you cut. So basically you should fold it first. Don't cut it first. Fold it first this way. And then you fold it first this way. So you fold it one fold it in like a Pac-Man eating Pac-Man like a taco. Then you fold so you fold it like Pac-Man. Inwards, and then you fold it like a taco. You're about to eat a taco, like Taco Bell. So you got you fold it like Taco Bell inside. Then you fold it again like Pac-Man. This Pac-Man is about to eat the little whatever, you know, Pac-Man or something. The cookie monster Pac-Man. And then you should cut it. Cut it after that. So I've cut it before because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And then you flatten it out again. And then you Turn it over, flip it over like a pancake, and you take the piece you cut, and you do like this. You fold it out, and you take this piece, and you fold it out like that. So now it's just, now Pac-Man is eating lunch, you know. And then you can fold it together like that. I think probably... And now this is what it looks like. Now, of course, I should have probably did it. Now the yeah, and the light is kind of messing it up. But the dice, I think I probably have to make it dice. Ruby's cube again. Because obviously, I need to really fold it better. Make it even or whatever. What the hell? And then I kind of like take the end 
that little pointy piece and I fold it up again like that so you got a little handle. So I just folded the pointy piece twice. You know, I folded it this way and I folded it this way. Now slight is really good, but somehow it doesn't look good. And then, I don't know, it's supposed to be a cube, but the light is so bright that it's not working so well. I think because of the light. But then I gotta fix it together. The Rubik's Cube I think is better, so but I think if it's all one solid color, if it's but you know it's kind of still that's what happened. I can see that too. I know it's kind of hard to see it this way. See, it's kind of a cube now. Oh, I know. I have to do it this way, probably. There. I think the Rebus Cube is a better version. But then you still see it. Because the concept is it's a reverse perspective. And it still kind of looks like a cube, even though it's hollowed out. I have to link the, the Rubik's Cube here because my Rubik's Cube is a thousand times better than, I don't know where the hell all my crowns are though. I think the cube is better. But this looks like it's the bottom, which it is the bottom. But it looks like it still looks like it's. It doesn't. It doesn't look like. A, it doesn't look like a um, this thing. It doesn't look like it's inside. It looks like it's convex, not concave. It looks like it's. It doesn't look like it's sticking out. It looks like it's sticking in or something. I mean, you know what I mean. It, it looks even as jacked up and homeless as my cube is. It's still kind of well, because my cube is so homeless, it doesn't work so well. But of course, the Rubik's Cube was much better. So I don't know. Yeah. It, I mean, if you close your eyes and The Rubik's Cube was so much better. Then again, I was just doing this to show you how to use it. It's almost like a flower, the way it looks like a little rose, but. But see, this is the front of it, so maybe. Let's see how it looks like this way. Can you tell if it's convex or convex? Now it's working. Look, yay! I can see it. It's reverse perspective to me now. It's like trippy cool now. So I have to start it way up here. So you can see the corner without seeing the corners. The by the circles. Uh, so you start it way up here. And 
Now it looks like reverse perspective again. Look at that. That's cool to me. I don't know if you could see it. It looks like really reverse perspective and trippy. It's just the lighting. The lighting is like really harsh. But it's kind of... It looks like a straight up cube. And then when you move it around, it's kind of like trippy a little bit. Now I can see it's not a reverse perspective. Now it looks like a cube again. It looks like ups, it's reverse perspective. And now it's trippy. It's so cool. But then you have to like do it a billion times. Obviously, if I had a Rubik's Cube or more so, I don't think it's a Rubik's Cube. I think it's because I had I did it freehand. And of course, me being a piss poor artist doing it freehand and not even and then not folding it properly, you get the results that you just got shoddy. Then I'm using magic marker or pens to color it. And being that I'm not an artist, this is the result. Some shot to hell reverse perspective. However, what I do with one in a book is going to be... Um, no, no, it's gonna be even. All the lines could be even. They're not gonna be all jacked up and homeless. It'll be all the same length. And then, like I said, fold one way like a taco. Fold, fold it inside halfway like a taco. Fold the other one inside halfway. I guess like a Pac-Man or a taco again. And then after you fold it on the lines, then you cut it. The part that says cut. Then you fold that part. Outside, you fold it backwards, and then you could attach it together. And I think if the, all the pieces were even, then it'll be a better reverse perspective. And of course, if I didn't use some homeless magic markers and what do you call that thing, permanent marker, and whatever, it'll probably come out better too. But it still looks like a reverse perspective, even with my toddler level art skills. Well, anyway, the one in the book would be a thousand times better than this homeless piece. But even with me doing a, you know, homeless Joe level, like I said, you know, cut that, you know, cut it out the book with an X-Acto knife or your scissors, then cut around the edges, the whole thing, then fold it in half, like a taco, whatever, and then fold it the other way in half. Then you cut this corner and then you fold the corner outside and then once you fold it out you can make sure everything's even and then I kind of just bend the corners up so I can have a grip a handle and there you go and so perhaps I won't oh see here you go it looks better this way look at that it's kind of a reverse perspective still like a cube even with the harsh strong ass lighting because it follows you. Doesn't it follow you? And of course, if you know it's concave, then it's following you. But if you if it's convex, it's like, why the hell is it following me? You can't tell it's convex. Can you tell? Oh, that's my washing machine saying, come and get me. Look at that. You can't tell that's convex. My neighbor upstairs must be wrestling his t-shirt. I don't know. Look at that. You can't tell. And that's me and my shot to hell level of freehand. So I'm about to get my clothes because my cat's telling me so. And here you go. Wow, super yellow <laughs> orange filter. Maybe not. Oh, that's why, because this is a blue filter. Now it's an ugly yellow filter. The color co correction. Anyway, that's my tutorial. Do log on and buy, you can buy Conversations Out of Chaos, The Bimbo Chronicles, Nine Crazy Dreams, and The Adventures of Miss Cutie and Fett right now via Amazon, Barnes & Noble, whatever. And look out very soon for a different perspective, coffee table art book, lots of colorful pictures. Um, you can get it as a PDF as well and print it out. I guess you can always print out that one page as a PDF, and that's easier than, <laughs> uh, I guess, cutting it. If you get it as a PDF, you could print out those two pages. But I mean, some of the pictures are very nice in there. And I like optical illusions. And some of the illusions aren't gonna work very well on a PDF, like the one I showed 
in the previous video about the word illusions. Um, I mean, you could do it on a PDF. I did. I mean, I did not. I'm not gonna say I did it, but as a, you you could do it on a PDF too. You don't have to get a hard copy, but I think some of the word illusions and are easier in hand, like this one here, the one I showed you guys in the last video. I mean, I mean, you could do it like that. I guess that's one way of doing it if you don't want to get the hard copy because I know space is precious and most people don't like books and newspapers and magazines lying around. I know I, I'm not one to have a lot of books lying around myself. I'd rather have everything online. And then if you get it on a PDF, you could just print out the cube, print out the reverse perspective art piece and, you know, print out the word illusions. And that way you could just have the word illusions, reverse perspective art piece and so forth to, you know, show around. Nonetheless, the proceeds of all those books go toward the circle's edge. And once the books are out there, look for the t-shirts for the children's book and look for the poster and the sheet and the rug and the floor mat and the rug for um, a different perspective um, perspective piece. Until then, thanks, bye-bye, and subscribe, and give me a thumbs up as well.